Hi, my name is Mike Bachman, and I'm a United Methodist pastor, and uh, I'm excited that we're able to share in a little question and answer time uh, with Imam Omar Soleiman. Uh, he's here to answer questions from some folks who have been part of our audience as we've been having an extended conversation together. Uh, so I'll introduce them each, and I'm um, looking forward to hearing their questions and the response that uh, Imam Omar has. Um, and now we have uh, Kelly from our audience here who has a question for uh, Imam Omar. Hi, um, I'm kind of cheating here because okay. I'm going to hope that you'll fight some battles that I've been fighting um, okay. within, unfortunately, my own family. Mm -hmm. So one of my best friends in the whole world is Muslim and was okay. my maid of honor in my wedding wow. many, many, many years ago. Um, <laughs> and we're still very, very close, which is why I'm here today. Great. Um, so first I want to know, can I wear the hijab without being disrespectful? Of course you can. Yeah, sure. Okay. And what is the meaning of that? First of all, I just want to do it so I don't have to do my hair every day. But, uh, <laughs> but. Well, one of the hijabis that we have here. But so, so it's, and that's part of the beauty of America is that these expressions of solidarity that we've had as well. Just wonderful people. And that's something that we, we feed off of. And that's something that we, as a community, we draw from that positive energy that, you know, there are people that, that are willing to even stand in solidarity. Uh, the poor Sikh community, they've been attacked because they look Muslim, okay, over and over and over again. Um, so they're being attacked for being Muslim even though they're not Muslim. So uh, it's wonderful to see solidarity and, and uh, certainly you won't be disrespectful to us. And I think it's, uh, it's wonderful to have people like you that are. That well, are I just didn't know if it, it would be taken as a, you know, not making fun of them or making light of it because I think it's a very intimate decision sure, that sure. the women make. Just know to say wa alaikum as when someone says salam alaikum to you. You'll be good. That's I, I, I'm, everything <laughs> Mary has taught for... me, I'm mutilated. So salam and all those guys. I can't do That's it. So. Okay, so, <laughs> so um, what I did when this came about was I asked the member of my family that um, argues with me repetitively about these issues um i it saddens me some of the belief system um that my own family members have and so i'd like for you to answer the questions that sure. i asked them to write and i said give me your best okay give me everything you got because all right here we go because and i i said if it's disrespectful i won't ask it but no no you can ask anything okay so here we go it's fine I won't tell you who it you is. got a whole four book. hours oh into question, yeah. and now you get the real hard ones. <laughs> okay, so this is again not these are not my questions. I understand it's not you. Okay, um, but I do have one for you at the end. Okay. Why won't the Muslim community stand up as Americans and speak out clearly against ISIS? I don't ex I don't accept that they are afraid because we are all afraid and they're attacking us, not the Muslims. Okay. All right. So number one, every single mosque in this country. The sermon on that Friday after San Bernardino was a condemnation of terrorism. We've condemned, 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 condemned. We've condemned more than, more than we've, more than we've read Quran lately. All right, it's just been I condemn, I condemn, and someone was even suggesting we have an app called I condemn, so we can just press a button every time something happens, and Muslims can say I condemn, I condemn, I condemn. Number one, there is an implicit, <laughs> there is an implicit racism sometimes in those questions, right? Because do we ask when when Dylan Roof murdered those people in that church, when when a white supremacist carries out murder, do we ask all white Americans in the country to stand up and condemn that? When any other faith group has a lunatic that comes out, when someone blows up an abortion clinic in the name of Christianity, do we ask all Christians to condemn? And why aren't we hearing you condemn? you know, that person that blew up the abortion clinic. So there's almost an implied guilt, collective guilt, and we have to reject that collective guilt. Um, I'm not responsible for, I'm just as hurt as anybody else when, when an attack takes place. Muslims died on 9-11. Muslims died on 9-11. Hundreds of Muslims died on 9-11. Not just a few, hundreds of them. Um, there were Muslim firefighters on 9-11. Um, so that's number one. We reject the collective guilt. We do condemn. We condemn not not because we believe that we're guilty. We condemn, number one, to distance ourselves. Number two, to, to show our congregation, you know, to, to, to just place that, that path forward, to pave that path that, okay, you know, this is not part of Islam and this is why it's not part of Islam. However, the media chooses what to cover and what not to cover. We reach out to the media all the time. Um, but the types of guests that are brought on these media outlets are often 
you know, not representative of our Muslim community. And when we do have someone that's put on these news channels eventually from our community, before they can even ask a question, they're asked questions like, do you support Hamas? Like, it, when, you know, they're, they're immediately put on the hot seat and, you know, their, their entire public life is put on display. So people, you know, people don't want to deal with that nonsense, right? So we do condemn, we do stand up against that bigotry and we stand up against that terrorism and all violence, in fact. Um, but we've condemned ourselves out. So that's one. Um, as far as the second part of that question, which is Muslims are being, or we're being attacked, not Muslims, the, the biggest victims, the, most of the victims of ISIS are Muslims. Mm -hmm. And I, Muslims hate ISIS probably more than, <laughs> even non-American Muslims hate ISIS more than most Americans do probably. So Muslims are the greatest victims of ISIS. And actually, you know, the journalists that are being, that were being massacred and things of that sort, there are a lot of Muslim journalists that were being massacred too. Um, so that doesn't take away from the tragedy of losing American journalists and things of that sort. But what about the hundreds of Syrian journalists and Iraqi journalists that were beheaded as well by ISIS? So we're fighting this cancer uh, as well. Um, I often tell people the irony of my situation. I've had death threats from ISIS and I've also been threatened by Islamophobes. So I've been attacked online, actually, of screenshots and emails and things of that sort from ISIS threatening to kill me for speaking out against them and then I've been threatened by Islamophobes for secretly belonging to ISIS and for being a for being uh, for sympathizing with ISIS and for mm. being a closet Islamist and so on and so forth. So the extremists will always will always speak in in uh, you know in a synchronized fashion but we have to reject it altogether. Okay. Um, how can you tell the good ones from the bad ones? <laughs> Because they are now being trained to shave and wear crosses and act very American to fool the public. Okay. And this is, I, I this is, this yeah, is I what I fight this. on right. a regular basis, I'm just saying. And I applaud you for bringing those questions it's, forward, right? I think I that... Mean, it's tough. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I guess the good ones have beards or... <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> well, I say, how can I tell any good person from any bad person. Absolutely. And I tell Absolutely. my children, you know, the boogeyman doesn't look like a boogeyman. Sure, sure. So that's that's how I answer it. But how do you tell a much more how do you tell a <laughs> well the way that you you know, how do you tell a, a potential supremacist or a potential mass school shooter, you know, mm -hmm. from 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 a normal person that's not going to shoot up a an elementary school, right? So I think that uh, again it's the implied racism mm -hmm. that uh uh, and, and, and the boogeyman effect. And, and even if you watch these different movies, there was a movie that came out recently about the Iraqi, the soldier in Iraq. I forgot what the name was. Was it? No, not 13 Hours Benghazi. The, the soldier, American Sniper. And I think the only, the only Muslim that appeared to be good in the movie turned out to be evil as well, right? So <laughs> this idea of, of you know, that, that kind Muslim, the cab driver, the neighbor, the that sweet Muslim is really, you know, plotting to kill you and they're practicing taqi and they're hiding their faith and these types of things. So you can't beat that. That's not something that we can do. To, we, we just can't beat that. So right. what I say is I would rather die with love than live with hate. Beautiful. So that's the beautiful. only... <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. I think that's Amen. a beautiful answer. Yeah. Amen. So... Um, I wish more people were like you. The, so. the rest of the questions are kind of along that line, mm -hmm. so I think we're good. Um, <laughs> but But... Um, I would like to know, and this is something that Miriam gave me an article, it was wonderful, what can we actually do? Because it is infuriating to me to hear stories that she tells me and knowing how much I love her and her family and, and the folks that she, in her community, it just, it's infuriating to not know what to do. Um, what, what can we actually do? Uh, we can continue to encourage dialogue and engagement and continue to respond to the negativity with, with more positive things. I think efforts like this, I think service projects, I think initiatives, I think uh, open mosques and open churches and synagogues and interfaith dialogues, people coming together and people using whatever they have. I, don't ever belittle your position. You know, to fight one, one person's hatred and, and stereotype is, is, is a noble job in and of itself. So don't ever belittle your capacity, what, what's been given to you. Um, you know, you don't, even if you're not speaking to a million people, if you're speaking to one, that's good enough. So everyone in their own right and in their own capacity just fighting that negativity. Um, I think that's, you know, hopefully those voices will come together. And, and I do believe that we're moving towards a more tolerant America. 
I think that uh, I think that the younger generation is by and large far more tolerant um, and accepting and uh, you know of, of uh, a more diverse America so I think we'll be okay well that's good to know thank you <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you. you so much Thanks. well that wraps our time of asking questions with Imam Omar Suleiman uh, I want to thank you for the opportunity uh, for me and for folks here to ask questions. Uh, I want to thank the, the people who showed up today um, to hear the interview and then to, to bring your own questions, whether they're from your, yourself, whether they're from family members and others. Um, the more opportunities we have to ask questions, the more opportunities we have for dialogue, um, the better off we'll all be. And so I'm grateful for this time together. I'm grateful for, for all the folks that you see here and all the folks behind the scenes that are working to make this possible. Um, this makes our country better. It makes our culture better. Uh, and I'm grateful for opportunities like this. Have a great day. Thank you.